By the end of this video, you will have a player that is completely locked to the left and right sides of the screen, and they will not be able to escape no matter how much they try. To keep our player within the screen, we will first need to calculate our screen bounds. In order to get this information, let's declare a new vector2 variable and we'll call this one screen bounds. We're now going to actually add our start method back and we're going to perform this calculation here. The way we can do this is by saying screen bounds equals camera dot main dot screen to world point and then passing in a new vector to which is going to have a set of brackets inside that is going to say screen dot width and screen dot height now this might seem a little confusing and it probably is if you haven't dealt with this before so let me try to explain we know of course that computer monitors and tvs operate in aspect ratios. And these aspect ratios are represented by pixels, the most common being 1920 width by 1080 height. When we retrieve screen.width and screen.height from Unity, these are the values that we're getting. But we don't want our characters like Tracer here to have to move almost 2000 units just to get from one side of the screen to the other. So Unity has its own internal system called Unity World Units, which are much smaller numbers that we can use for, to perform our calculations. That way, our characters only have to move 10 or 20 units to get from one side of the screen to the other, and we can keep our numbers much, much smaller. Now, having performed this calculation, we can go into our update method, and we can effectively restrict our player's movement to stay within the local screen bounds. To do this, we'll go below our movement code, and we'll make a new float variable, and we'll call this clamped x, and we'll set this to be equal to an equation that's going to be called mathf dot clamp then we're going to open parentheses and it's going to tell us what it's looking for first it needs to know the value that it's going to be clamping or restricting in this case it's going to be the transform dot position dot x which refers to this value right here on the player. It's part of his transform, it's his position, and it's his x value. We are then going to type comma, and it is going to tell us it needs the minimum value, which in this case is going to be screen, actually it's going to be negative screen bounds dot x, and then the maximum value, which is going to be positive screen bounds dot x. Next, we need to get a reference to the player's current position, and we can do this by typing vector2, pause, and pause is the name of our variable, it will be equal to our transform.position, so equal to our player's current position. Then we will say pause.x is equal to clamped x, and finally we will reassign this position back to our player. We will say transform.position equals pause, and I'll just add some helpful comments in here. There we go. We can hit save and we can test this out to see if it works the way we expect it to. The short answer is it does, but it also doesn't. It does restrict our movement to stay within the screen bounds. However, the player can still partially walk off the screen. It's not really necessary to fix this for the purposes of this game as we will eventually be adding camera movements. The player is also tipping over, so that's another little issue to fix here. Uh, but we will go ahead and fix it anyway, just so you can see how to do it. To fix this flipping issue, though we're going to access the rigid body scroll down into the rigid body go to constraints and we're going to freeze the player's z rotation just to make sure that the player cannot flip over on his side to fix this final issue with the player partially being able to walk off the screen we're going to scroll up we're going to make a private float and we are going to call this player half width and we are not going to assign it any default value. However, we are going to go into start and we are going to assign this value here. We are going to say player half width equals get component. Then we're going to do greater than less than brackets and say sprite renderer. We're gonna close that bracket, parentheses. Then we're going to say dot bounds dot extends dot X. Let's explain what this is doing. If we look over here, at our sprite in Unity, 
and look at this player movement script. Get component is taking a look at all the components also attached to this object and it's asking is any one of these a sprite renderer? In this case, the answer is yes, there is a sprite renderer right here. So therefore, this part has been successful. The next thing it's going to do is it's going to reach into the sprite bounds, dot extends, and try to get the x value. What's that? Well, we can't actually see the bounds, dot extends, dot x value here on the sprite renderer, but basically what it's doing is it's trying to get this point here on the very right side of the sprite and get the value, numeric value, that would be associated with that. If we were to zoom in here on the sprite and imagine the very center of the sprite being somewhere around here, we would call this 0, 0. Over here to the right side, this might be something like 0.5f, and on the left side, this would be minus 0.5f. So really, if you get over here on the right side, this is technically half the total width of the sprite, because the middle is 0, and the very right would be 0.5. If we want to see what that actual value is, we can go back into the script, and we can go down a line and say print, and then put in brackets, we can say player half width. Then we add a semicolon and go test that out. And if I were to now run the game, we are going to see that indeed it has printed a value of 0.73, which we can assume would be the right side of this player. But basically what's happening right now is if we were to move this player all the way over here to the left, currently we're clamping the char the middle of the character, that 0, 0 position on the left side, and then alternatively we're doing the same thing on the right. We're clamping the very center of the character to stay within the screen bounds. What we want to do is instead say this is where the character should stop, meaning that the technically the point we want to register as the screen bounds is no longer the far left side. It's the far left side plus half the player's width, which is going to be right about here. And then equivalently, it's going to be the same thing on the right side. It's going to be not the actual far side of the screen. It's going to be the far side of the screen minus half the player's width. Knowing this number, we can come back here into the code scroll down and go here to where we're calculating the negative screen bounds and we can say plus spell it right player half width and then to the other side we can say positive screen bounds minus player half width if we save and go back to unity to test we can see that it does indeed work however there is one more slight issue and this issue actually has to do with this player sprite itself the code is working fine but if we're to look at the way that the sprite is set up we're using the idle one over here go into the edit view the sprite editor we can see that it is the sprite is cut but it actually has some blank space around it so the calculation is working but it's calculating it directly to where this blue endpoint is if i was to manually adjust this however say to 27 over here and then drag this one over then we can hit apply go back and test that out one more time we can see that now it actually works perfectly fine in the next video we will be flipping our character to face the direction he is moving in We'll see you there.